That's what I'm talking about. Stop the FOMO. Did Sony kill the future of OLED TVs right before CES 2024? While everybody, including myself, is getting so excited for all the latest and greatest OLED TV announcements at CES 2024, live coverage on my channel beginning on Monday, Sony last week had some announcements that completely rained on our OLED parade. They basically said, that OLED TVs were not good enough. Specifically, the future is 4,000 nit content and OLED TVs cannot get bright enough. And here's the shocker, because I agree with Sony, I think 4,000 nit content will be a thing. The future of OLED TVs is looking dim. Agree or disagree? We'll talk about it on today's FOMO show. And today's video is brought to you by WhoKeys. Trying to build a PC on a budget but don't know where to buy your Windows 10 software on the cheap? Who keys to the rescue? Use my code SF20 and immediate discount. At the bottom of this order where it says code card, to the right is the product key you need to activate Windows. So copy this long number, then go to the Windows menu and click on settings. In the settings menu at the bottom, select update and security. Select activation, then select change product key, paste what you copied from WhoKeys, click next, click activate, and you're done. You can download a copy of Windows 11 Pro with my discount code SF20 and BAM. Wait, didn't Sony just win three TV shootouts in a row with the A90J, the A95K, and the A95L, all three TVs, OLED technology, right? A90J with LG displays, W OLED technology, and the last two TVs, A95K and A95L, Samsung displays QD OLED technology, awesome TVs, awesome technologies. But with one word, 4,000 nits, wait, that's two words. <laughs> with two words, 4,000 nits, Sony completely destroyed Korea's OLED TV industry, namely LG Display and Samsung Display's OLED technology by announcing that 4,000 nits is the future. And there are a multitude of reasons why Sony did that. We're gonna get into it. And these reasons are actually pretty compelling. But essentially by saying 4,000 nits is the future, OLED TVs cannot even break 2,000 nits. I mean, barely breaking 1,500 nits, honestly. And so they will never get to 4,000 nits. They're pushing this mini LED technology as the only way to get to 4,000 nits, at least for now, which in essence is thrusting the leadership of mini LED technology into the lap of China. China's TV makers, Hisense, TCL, are the leaders in super bright mini LED TVs. Of course, Samsung and Sony now are there too. Samsung has always been doing bright TVs, but Chinese companies like TCL and Hisense have been very focused on brightness because really that's the only way they can separate themselves, right? They don't have OLED. Korea has OLED. Samsung Electronics has been kind of balancing their technologies between mini LED and OLED hedging their bets, but Samsung Display, they've completely bought into OLED, QD OLED. They sold off all of their mini LED and LCD TV technologies, leaving them exposed. Samsung Display exposed to this move to mini LED 4,000 nits. Now, Samsung Display, to be fair, they do have QNED or QNET, their version of QNED, using nano rod, blue nano rod instead of OLED, and blue nano rod potentially could get bright enough. So QD OLED can be replaced with QD nano rod micro LED type display. So Samsung display better unshelf their QNED technology or Q quantum dot nano rod technology that they shelved last year because they thought QD OLED will be the future. Well, Sony just said, no, no, OLED not bright enough. QD OLED not bright enough. Bring something that can hit 4,000 nits. Okay, so now let's get into the essence. Now, if you wanna know, you know, the Sony technology is backlight, we have a live stream that we covered it. Uh, yesterday. Today, I'm going to cover the future of OLED TVs. Well, first of all, why is Sony pushing this 4,000 nit agenda? And this is very important to understand because first, let's talk about previous feature buzz agendas, right? 3D, 
did not take off for many reasons, mostly because it was very awkward, you gotta wear glasses, content creators have to create a 3D version of the video, it's expensive and people were not very interested, ultimately 3D did not take off. 8K, second buzzword that definitely did not take off, for the number one reason being there was no 8K content, but more importantly, even if there was 8K content, the distinction on a 65 inch between 8K content and 4K content on an 8K TV, none. Looks exactly the same. Resolution, even honestly 1080p upscale to 4K looks pretty good. So the resolution between 4K and 8K, minimal. I mean, you might have to go to a 120, 150 inch screen to see that difference and you're pretty close, right? So 8K didn't take off for that reason on the hardware side and on the visible, spectrum, but more importantly, content creators would not do 8K for three reasons. First, super expensive. You have to buy a lot of 8K equipment, not cheap. Second, grading and processing 8K, super expensive, more computer processing powder, all that. And third, 8K bandwidth is insane. Netflix, Prime Video, they will not push 8K over a stream. It's just too expensive, and for what? You still can't tell the difference. So 8K could not take off because content creators, the entire production side refused and the distribution side refused and Blu-ray discs cannot fit 8K. But 4,000 nit content does not have any of those problems faced by 3D or by 8K. First, no additional equipment needed. As a matter of fact, it's quite easy to take old content graded in SDR or HDR, and then bring those peak levels up to 4,000 nits. You can remaster almost anything 4,000 nits because let's say The Witcher, you have scenes where bright sunlight in a window, that bright sunlight, filter it up to 4,000 nits, keep the rest of the scene the same, dark shadows are all there. It's just those peak highlights, boom. From let's say 1,200 nits, where it is right now maybe, 900 nits, 4,000 nits. This is realistic because in real life, if you see sunlight in a bright window shining into a dark room, that bright sunlight is like 10,000, 100,000 nits in real life. So it's not too bright as in that scene is still less than the brightness in your room. If you have a sun shining through a window in that same way that would be in movies on Netflix or Amazon Prime. So getting it to 4,000 nits gives you that HDR impact that's real. And Dolby Vision has been pushing this forever. So forget Sony. Dolby Vision has been promising 10,000 nits if that's possible. So 4,000 nits gets us halfway there almost, right? Now, you're saying, well, then there's no 4,000 nit content. Just like there's not enough 8K content or 3D content, where's 4,000 nit? Who's gonna do it? Is it too expensive? Ah, here's where it gets very special. Sony can create an entire ecosystem for 4,000 nit content. First, Sony Productions. They make TV shows, they make movies, they can easily say, guys, I want you to grade peak specular highlights, 4,000 nits everywhere. Then we could say this movie, 4,000 nits capable, is your TV capable of 4,000 nits? Second, Sony, conveniently enough, a few months ago just released the first 4,000 nit mastering monitor dual cell monitor, $25,000. They will be replacing all of their old 1,000 nit monitor with a 4,000 nit monitor. So Sony production will be using 4,000 nit monitors. And why would Netflix and Amazon suddenly adopt 4,000 nits as a thing? Because it's a buzzword. It's a reason for people to tune in. It's a reason for Netflix and Amazon to say, wait, if you want 4,000 nit content, we're gonna charge you an extra five to oh, five bucks. I'll say $2, that's not enough. $5, 4,000 nits. You know, you don't, your TV's not good enough, that's okay. Take the base package capable of 500 nits, but you want 4,000 nits? Pay an extra five bucks when your TV is ready. And the best part, no additional bandwidth is needed. Unlike 3D, unlike 8K, you're gonna have to increase the bandwidth because there's more information. The information currently used for Dolby Vision or HDR10, they could fit in 4,000 nits without increasing that bandwidth at all, and the cost, nothing. It's all on the software side. Most importantly, the biggest cost might be the monitor to grade in 4,000 nits. The secret is though, you don't need that monitor even, right? 
a color grader could just software say, you know what, I can't tell if it's 4,000 nits or not, but I'm gonna push this button, hit the filter, and suddenly 4,000 nits is there, is in those specular highlights, just like Dolby Vision is doing now. Yeah, that's also a feature. You could grade Dolby Vision scene by scene, as you should, dynamic tone mapping, or you could take HDR10, click Dolby Vision filter on your video processor, and suddenly, oh, I got Dolby Vision. <laughs> 4,000 nits can be remastered, added to older content. Boom, 4,000 nits. Just like they're remastering older content in HDR and Dolby Vision, you can do the same with 4,000 nit content. Suddenly, there is a buzz. Now, you have two people buying into this buzz. Content creators like Netflix and Amazon, an excuse to make more money, they're there. 4,000 nit content, extra $5, they're in. Now, on the TV side, there is nothing cheaper than adding brightness. Adding resolution is actually more expensive. Those additional pixels cost a lot of money for two reasons. First, more pixels. Second, higher density. It takes more energy to put out more light or the same amount of light through more pixel density. So if you have a 4K TV putting out 1,000 nits, 8K TV, putting out 1,000 nits requires more, way more energy. So it's easier to hold it at 4,000 nits, I mean, sorry, 4,000 pixels resolution. 4K TV going twice as bright, cheaper to do than an 8K TV making the same brightness as a similar 4,000 4K TV. So 8K TV requires more energy, more processing, that's a lot of pixels and data to tone map and do all those things, motion, right? 8K motion is very, very process intensive. The 4K motion, they already got it. So the TV makers actually would rather go with brighter mini LED and they are already there. Conveniently enough, at CES 2024, we've already seen the early announcements, both TCL and Hisense have TVs being released in 2024 capable of over 4,000 nits. Now, Sony is on this bandwagon, 4,000 nits. And we know Samsung, they haven't announced anything yet, but I am certain their mini LED TV will be capable of 4,000 nits, or it better be. That leaves LG in the shadows because their QNED mini LED TV, they only have one model. It is a QNED model, it is 4K, but is it 4,000 nits? I have my doubts. I think LG did not realize this is where Sony was going. So next year, LG needs to get their mini LED QNED TV up to 4,000 nits, if it's not 4,000 nits in 2024. And most importantly, what about OLED? So we talked about Samsung Display. They will have to revisit QNED or QD, nano rod, micro LED, blue, get it up to super bright, 4,000 nits, phosphorescent blue OLED, if it cannot do 4,000 nits, which I don't believe it can. I mean, that's not why it's there. But if it can, that could extend the life of OLED TVs. If it cannot, if it can only sustain 2,000, not good enough, and that's a problem. So at least Samsung Display has an out in their quantum dot, nano rod technology. Yeah, definitely look into that. I'm gonna ask Chirag about that. Chirag, 4,000 nits is the future. You guys don't have LCD mini LED anymore. What you gonna do about it? Chirag, this is for you. LG Display, on the other hand, they're in big trouble. They're completely all in on WOLED. And even with MLA, barely above 1,500 nits. I mean, some people are saying 2,000 nits. I don't think so. You're lucky to get above 1,500 nits with W OLED and definitely not on a 5% window. Now, let's say they do get to 2,000 nits. That's only half the brightness of 4,000 nits. What will LG Display do? Very interesting to ask what they think about this. Now, before you say to me, wait, 4,000 nits is years and years away. Netflix and Amazon how quickly can they remaster all of their old content, HDR content at least, to 4,000 nits? I think they could do it within months. I mean, that's how easy it is to remaster brightness. So forget new content. We're talking about old content without even using the new 4,000 nit super expensive mastering monitor. That's likely $30,000. What 
will you do then? You, the viewer, and this is where I'm telling you, what will you do if in 2024, suddenly Netflix, Prime Video, Peacock, Hulu, Max, they all said, oh yeah, you know what? Sony's got something great going on. Magically, we got 4,000 nit content now, right? You wanna watch Mandalorian? It's 4,000 nits. Hmm, let's talk about why Sony would do this. Why would they completely undermine their recent wins with OLED TVs? Because remember, it's been OLED TVs that's taken leadership as far as winning TV reviewer hearts like mine, as well as shootouts. So why would Sony embrace an agenda? 4,000 nits to me is an agenda. Why would they do that when it clearly would undermine the future of OLED TVs and they dominated that OLED TV market in terms of image quality, right? And the answer is simple, economics, business. OLED TVs, <laughs> they're expensive. The margins, although might be nice, the volume is not there. So think of it this way, the A95L, very expensive TV, continues to be very expensive. Check it out, right? It's $3,000, $4,000, depending on the size, over $2,000 on the smallest size. Well, the margin might be nice, but how many are they selling? Now, a mini LED TV that is capable of 4,000 nits, same price, but the margins are much better. Consumers will then be like, wait, should I get this OLED? But it's not capable of 4,000 nits. But then this mini LED TV, maybe $100 cheaper, still expensive, but it's capable of 4,000 nits. I'll get the mini LED TV. Guess what? Sony makes more money on that mini LED TV. This is why Samsung is pricing its Neo QLED so expensive as well. Great margins, even though OLED TVs may have a better image quality, they make more, uh, they make more money on a Neo QLED TV. And this is why TCL and Hisense have not jumped into the OLED bandwagon. They're like, wait, if OLED TVs cost the same as a mini LED TV that's slightly larger, why don't we just sell larger, brighter mini LED TVs? And this is why you saw the chart. OLED TVs, the market share is not increasing, it's shrinking. Peak OLED TV was in 2021. In 2022, sales of OLED TVs dropped a little bit. And then last year in 2023, it just cratered. Now. DSCC, they predicted, right? They're the TV analysts, panel analysts. They predicted a rise in OLED TV sales in 2024. That was before Sony announced the future is 4,000 nits and OLED has no place in that future. I think DSCC will revise that prediction. No longer will there be growth agree or disagree. I mean, did I cover everything? I covered the content, it will be there. Remastering, quite simple, quite quick, cheap to adopt and affordable. You all complain. Look, look at these posts I had recently, right? Right here, I'm gonna put it right over there. What was your number one complaint? Ah, all the TVs, a 77 inch, too expensive. I'm gonna get an 85 inch mini LED. Let me know in the comments below. Are we on the right track? Is the future 4,000 nits? Because if it is, OLED is gone. Until next time, or wait, the next time is CES 2024. Check out our coverage Monday, our first coverage, and Thursday, we're gonna cover more, and we'll try to jump in with impromptu live streams whenever possible. Until next time, stop the FOMO.